In this video, we will talk about orthogonal sets. So first, consider this set of three vectors, u1, u2, u3. So this set is an orthogonal set because the dot product between any two vectors that are different will be zero. So you can try computing, let's say, u1 and u2. This will be a negative three plus two plus one, which is zero. And you can try for the combination u1, u3 and u2, u3. So such a set is called an orthogonal set. And more importantly, we have that orthogonal sets form a linearly independent set. And so if you consider the set with their span, well, the orthogonal set is a basis. And so you have something called an orthogonal basis for a subspace. And that's important because of the following theorem, that if you have a orthogonal basis, then you can figure out how to describe your vectors. So this isn't too hard to show. So suppose we have an orthogonal basis for some subspace. Let V be some vector in V, then you know that V can be written as a linear combination of the basis vectors. But what are the scalars C1 to Cn? Well, here's something that you can do. Let's take the dot product of V and U1. So when you do that, then you get something like this. But remember that U1 to Un are an orthogonal set. So that means u2 dot u1, u3 dot u1, all the way to un dot u1, they're all zeros. So the only one that survives is this one. And the dot product of a vector with itself is the magnitude squared. So we can actually solve for c1. c1 is given by v dot u1 divided by u1 squared. You can do the same step, but with the vector uj. So you take the dot product uj with everything, then the only one that will survive is the jth coefficient times the magnitude. So we have a formula to get the cjth coefficient. So if we are given a vector and we want to rewrite it under an orthogonal basis, then we can figure out what the coefficients are using this formula. Now let's talk about orthogonal projections. So let u and v be vectors in Rn, so something like this. The orthogonal projection of v onto u is this vector. This vector going in the u direction, such that this vector plus some vector orthogonal to u can equal v. So we're looking for some alpha so that it goes this much, and then a z that's orthogonal to u. So z dot u will be zero. So how can we find such an alpha? Well, we apply the same trick. We apply u to both sides. When we apply u, the z dot u becomes zero. So we're left with just this. So actually alpha is given by this formula. The projection of v onto u is given by the formula v dot u divided by magnitude of u squared times the vector u. This part is just a scalar, and you want to find how much you need to go in the u direction to end up here, which should be the orthogonal projection of v onto u. 